Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Nobano Earth Weekend. This is a festival of arts and ideas. It's part of the Nobano Folk Art and Crafts Fair. What is wonderful is that this is happening after two years. And it's happening just before Holi, the Festival of Colors, which is like an affirmation of life, of new beginnings, of everything that is good and empowering. So welcome to a Nobano Earth Weekend in person, well, partly live after two years. I'm not going to waste time anymore. First, let me invite Shanta Ghosh, the Managing Trustee, Shurish Omiya Memorial Trust, and Shubit Chakraborty, Secretary, SAMT, for their opening remarks and welcome. Namaskar. A very good evening to all of you. On behalf of the Shuresh Omiya Memorial Trust and myself, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. This is the 16th anniversary celebrations of Nobannu and the fourth edition of new Nobannu Earth Weekend, which is a festival for uh, literature. I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Manford Oster, Council General of Germany. We would also like to greet our guest, Mr. Aman Kumar Jain, Assistant Director, Office of Development Commissioner, Handicrafts, Kolkata. Ms. Noyantara Pal Chaudhuri, Honorary Consul of Norway and the first woman chairperson of the India Tea Association, which is a great achievement. Celebrated artist, Mr. Jogan Chaudhuri, Professor Pankaj Panwar, Principal of Kalabhavan, Professor Gautam Das of Kalabhavan, Ms. Astrid Wege, Head of Goethe Institute, Max Muller Bhavan, and Mr. Probit Chatterjee, uh, District Governor of Rotary International. I'm grateful for your participation as your support contributes to the upliftment of these local communities. Nobanno Mela and Nobanno Earth Weekend, new, is organized and sponsored by Shuresh Omiya Memorial Trust, which is uh, referred to as SAMT often. Founded by my late father, uh, Dr. Sadhan Siddharth, founder chairman of development consultant group of companies in memory of his parents. This trust goal is to work with local communities by organizing programs in education, art, uh, handicrafts, and healthcare. The trust also runs Montessori schools, namely Mondres in Kolkata, Newtown, Shantiniketan, and Kharagpur in the IIT campus. My colleague, Mr. Shubit Chakravorty, will elaborate more on the activities of the trust. Navarno Art and Crafts Fair was initiated in 2006 at the Gitanjali Cultural Complex here. It provides a platform to the artisans from all over India to sell their products and interact directly with the end buyers without any middle person. The trust does not take any commission for their participation or from the sale of their wares. During the uh, festival, the trust also organizes workshops for artisans and students, an art competition for school children, and a medical camp for the disadvantaged. Participation of artisans at Nobanno has multiplied with each passing year. In 2006, we started with a few local artisans. This year, we ha have 220 craft persons from different districts of West Bengal and seven other states in India, displaying crafts unique to their region. Nobanu Earth Weekend is an initiative of the Trust since 2019. It's a non-profit, open access, bilingual festival of arts and ideas. We have a great team working under the leadership of curator Ms. Anjum Katyal and assisted by Ms. Atri Sengupta. This year's theme is 75 years of Indian independence. With the onslaught of the COVID pandemic, the artisans have suffered financially, not having hardly any opportunities to showcase their work. 
This situation has motivated some of the more established artisans to sell their wares online through different platforms, often with the help of NGOs and private organizations. This change encouraged us to launch an online marketplace to display the products of artisans online, to connect to a wider audience anywhere in the world. Through Navanomela.com, we will provide hand-picked crafts created by skilled craftsmen, designers, local artists who are using sustainable processes and natural materials. Last year, due to the pandemic, we could not have the fair here in Shantiniketan, but we did have the Literature Fest on a virtual platform with participants from all over the world. It gives our team immense pleasure that we could meet in person this year after a long period of quarantine. While we see a light at the end of the COVID tunnel, we cannot help think of those who have left us. While we celebrate now, our thoughts and prayers go out to the people of Ukraine. Lastly, I thank all my team members for their months of hard work to make this festival happen. I won't take up any more of your time and hand it over to my colleagues, Mr. Shubhi Chakraborty and Ms. Anjum Katyal, who will elaborate further on the program for the weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Shantadi. Uh, Shubhi Chakraborty, Secretary SAM. A Namaskar to everybody present here today and my artisans, brothers and sisters who have joined us for this Nobanno after a lapse of one year. In the last Nobanno that we had was in March of 20. After that, there was a lockdown, which both which you know, and the nightmares, the trauma that we faced. But we hope the past is over and we have a very, very bright future ahead. Shure Shumiya Memorial Trust, as Mrs. Ghosh has uh, told you briefly, has been working with the artisans of the region and as well as in Dinajpur and other places of West Bengal for almost 20 years. In our endeavor to help the artisans to help themselves uh, through providing them marketing platform, like the one we are having right now, no one know, uh, providing them skill upgradation, design development, and as an engineering company being the base of the trust, it, technology development. Technology is very important. Maybe it is handicraft, but there are many things which are very repetitive, which with good technology, you can add value to your craft and even go in for a cheaper, not a cheaper price, I wouldn't say, a better finish and a better quality thing. So handicraft is not necessarily what you do with hands. Yes, surely you do something with your hand. That's the primary focus. But there is a lot of technological inputs that help in making the craft better and more competitive in the market. In this endeavor of uh, helping the artisans to help themselves, we have been associated with the Office of the Development Commissioner Handicrafts, Government of India, Ministry of Textiles since 2004. Uh, with their collaboration, advice and assistance, we have uh, done around 55 uh, design workshops. In these workshops, the artisans have participated. We have had designers from Ahmedabad, from NIFT and other design institutes to give them appropriate designs, the ones that the market now needs and what is best suited to their skill. It, it is very important to understand the skill of the artisan. A design has to be what matches his skill. You, everybody cannot do everything. So understanding the skill of the artisan and upgrading their skill is a very important part, we feel, in taking handicraft forward. So we have done 55 of these workshops of which 1800 artisans have directly participated and indirectly there is a large number of other artisans who have done. Then the other area we thought that needs to be taken care of is that we have found that many of the crafts have languished. The reason being that the children don't take up the trade that their parents have practiced. 
for many reasons. So we have in 20 schools around this area, which mainly has children artisanal from the artisanal families, the tribal backgrounds, we have given them courses on craft awareness, history of the craft, what you should be doing, what are the benefits of learning this craft. And uh, we are happy to say that a number of them have continued their practice of the parents of becoming craftsmen and working in the field of craft. The other area that we have worked is making self-help groups. Self-help groups are, are small groups, which you are aware, who in, in a, like a small little community, make their products and sell it to the market. Uh, in, in Dinajpur, we had uh, made around 20 self-help groups under the government of India scheme of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, taught them from scratch. First, we did a skill mapping of what the skills are like and segregated them in those divisions, given them training in technology, in marketing, entrepreneurial development, internet marketing, so that they could be better craftsmen with knowledge of the market and the great field that lies ahead of them. Then thereafter, this training and helping, we formed a society for them and the society functions. And there are a few of those artisans who were trained by us in Dilajpur. Here, they participate in Delhi, they participate in Surajpur, they participate in all over India. And they have done very well for themselves. It's their skills that we have helped to hone and we are glad that we could be a part of their process. Another focus area of the trust is empowering women. In our 1800 artisans that we have trained, a majority are women and those from the underprivileged section. In this, the government of West Bengal has been very helpful. There is a department called Shorojgar Limited, which is a department for self-help groups and self-employment. This department of the government has been holding our hands for the last six years. And through them, we have trained 800 ladies, women in Katha stitch, in cane and bamboo work and natural fiber. And they are again doing quite well for themselves. They, some of them are here in the Mela and the government has also assured us that they will give us similar programs in future. This is in the area of handicrafts for self-help groups and self-employment. Another challenge that the government gave us was to teach inmates of correctional homes to stitch and learn tailoring. So this is another course that we had taken with the inmates of a correctional home uh, nearby, Suri. And there are about 35 of the inmates were taught tailoring, uh, they were taught stitching. And now they have become, they make the dresses in the jails, uh, in this correctional home for people. And the, we, uh, we feel that some of them who are going to again, come in, and into the normal stream of life will be able to have a profession as a tailor or into the stitching world. So this is uh, what we have done in the handicraft sector regarding education. Mrs. Bosch uh, has, has mentioned, we have four schools, one in Delhi, Mother's Grace Montessori House, and three in the region, one in IIT Kharagpur, one in Kolkata, and the other in, in Newtown. Here again, the underprivileged children are also given a, a very big a boost to have a better future. The ch children who do not pay also, and the children who pay have their classes together, and the trust provides them with books, with tiffin, with their dresses, and helps them uh, so that they can properly, that they can blend with all the students that who are studying there. And some of them have also gone to higher education. One of them is doing her BA. And but this is the other area of the trust in the field of education. And I can see people are getting bored. So I wouldn't say much again, because there's lots to say. I wish I could have an hour to say. But thank you for your patience. And please support the trust. Please support the artisans. When you go out, buy from them, because they need your help. And you are what they can they look forward to your support. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you.
and we're delighted at Novan Noah's weekend, the fourth edition, to have with us as chief guest the German Consul General in Kolkata, Mr. Manfred Oster. Could I request him to please come and say a few words? Mr. Oster, could we hear it for him, please? Thank you, Orangela. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very happy and pleased and privileged to be here to opening this festival. Um, I think that Nibbana Earth Weekend sounds encompassing, very comprehensive. Uh, we have heard already about the aspect of the crafts in it. We, we know that it is reaching out to also underprivileged communities. Um, we, we see that it is in its, that there have been four editions of the weekend already. Um, it pronounces earth and with that also sustainability as one of the, of the light motifs of these events. 75 years of Indian independence is on the agenda as well. With that also tomorrow, there will be um, two very dedicated sessions, at least judging from the titles that we have in our program, um, Enduring Democracy on one side and The Good Fight about the role of violence and nonviolence in the struggle for independence. And I guess uh, when the program was drafted, it was not so obvious as how current these topics actually are globally. Um, of course, I'm referring to the war of aggression that Russia has launched against Ukraine, which is still ongoing, despite the fact that 141 members of the United Nations in a special emergency session have condemned that attack, have asked an immediate stop of the fighting and total withdrawal of all Russian troops from the total territory of Ukraine in its international borders. So we see that violence and nonviolence is a concept that definitely uh, needs to be looked at. We currently in Europe are faced with that attack on our continent, the first one of a full out war since the Second World War. And that will have consequences to the way that we are dealing also in the long run with our defense, common defense. And so the concept of nonviolence, which is very dear to the heart of many in my country and on our con uh, continent, is unfortunately challenged and put in questions. And I must add, I must add that unfortunately, probably the people are right to say, well, this is only one of the elements that we can follow in preserving peace because it needs two sides who are willing to, to do that. Um, Sustainability is the other element that, that I would like to stress. And we have a global crisis ongoing, which is a climate crisis, and therefore the need to use productions and forms of production that are in line with nature and can respect the needs of our planet and of the non-human animals as well that are running around on this planet um, is another very urgent task that we all globally have to adhere to. And I think that India is a country that has a different attitude to life forms in general than we have in the West. And I think the, the world can profit from that. And if we can see also from the artists using sustainable materials, using traditional hand, handicrafts, um, preserving by doing so not only nature, but also preserving their culture. Uh, that is a very forward looking modern way of dealing with it. And I congratulate the festival for highlighting that element as well. I think that is enough from my side at this stage. Thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm very pleased that I can contribute to the opening of this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Manfred. That was the inauguration of the fourth edition of Nobadno Earth Festival, a Nobadno Earth Weekend, a festival of arts and ideas by Mr. Manfred Oster, the German Consul General in Kolkata. And now I'd like to invite on stage Mr. Aman Kumar Jain, Assistant Director, Office of Development Commissioner, Handicrafts, Kolkata, 
Ms. Noen Tharapal Chaudhary, Honorary Consul of Norway, the first woman chairperson of the Indian Tea Association, ITA. Artist Sri Jogen Chaudhary, Professor Pankaj Panwar, Principal of Kalabhavan, Professor Gautam Dash, Kalabhavan, Ms. Astrid Weger, Head of Kuwaiti Institute, Max Miller Bhavan, Mr. Prabir Chatterjee, District Governor of Rotary, Anjum Katyal, Curator, New Nabanno Earth Weekend for the Rice Pouring Ceremony, of course, Manfred and Shantadi, you're already on stage. Mr. Jen, may I request you to say a few words? Thank you, everyone, especially Suresh Emya Memorial Trust. I am from Office of Development Commissioner Handicrafts. For those who don't know about this department, it works under Ministry of Textiles. And uh, this department was started in 1952 by Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay and uh, with a kind of uh, giving support to the handicraft artisans. And today, as we have the German counselor over here, I would like to share an information that this department, when Kamla Devi started as a handicraft board, she visited many different villages, especially I'll make uh, recall the situation about Madhubani paintings in Bihar. And there was a time when Madhubani was not that much even recognized by people and artisans used to practice it as a ritual in their homes and it was not even considered a kind of craft. So when these villages got uh, flooded most of the times, so a lot of Germans visited that time and they recognized these paintings and asked these artisans to, can they do it for them on the paper? And that's how the painting started and with the promotion of government support and that kind of support when artisans got, they started doing it on paper and then it came on cloth and now you can see it on wall, on trains, on bus and every other scene. So sometimes I believe and it's very important that the kind of craft that was once practiced as a ritual sometimes needs to be decontextualized from its original context so that it can reach to masses so that it doesn't get languished. Today we have a lot of crafts in India that are on the urge of languishing. There are very few families that are practicing it. So for that reason, it's very important sometimes to decontextualize crafts from its original context. And that's how it gets promoted also. Maybe there are slight, the charm, the charismatic can lose, but it's still the craft survives. So for that reason, and in that aspect, government is doing a lot towards promotion and development of the handicrafts. And uh, I know I am coming from a handicraft and uh, government background, so uh, it's mostly criticized for more of the most of the things. But bureaucracy can be can turn very beautiful if its aesthetic is confronted. And in that spirit, we are collaborating with Suresh Omya Memorial Trust and other good NGOs who are coming forward to work for the benefit of these artisans. So in that spirit, we congratulate uh, Suresh Omya for this beautiful uh, ambience that they have created and the kind of uh, market platform they are providing to the artisans. We always extend to share with this, our collaboration, government collaboration with their trust to go forward and take these artisans to a better place. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Jain. And please could I request Sri Jogen Chodhri to come up and address us. Sri Jogen Chodhri, an intrinsic part of Shantiniketan and the arts world. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm extremely happy to be here today with all of you, particularly for this occasion, uh, which is happening 
almost several years. And I think last year we had no program, but we were also not here. But luckily I have come during this period and this is happening here this year. So I'm really feeling happy, uh, particularly this art fair. This is not only art fair, this is a fair which is connected with people, which is connected with the earth, which is connected with our Nobanno means the first crops. So I'm really happy and it is connected with folk art, art, and this particular platform is connected with art and ideas of art, for which I'm very happy since I'm being an artist. I feel that the organizer has particularly organizing some programs which where we can talk about art, philosophy of art, how it is connected with people and also the aesthetics of people. So I congratulate the organizer for making this program and I wish that this will happen every year like this. And I thank all the organizers here, particularly Mrs. Shanta Ghosh, who is the main organizer. Thank you. Thank you, Joginda. I'd like to invite Mr. Pankaj Panvar, Principal of Kalabhavan, to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. So I'm extremely happy that this kind of function, uh, which is related to earth, culture, craft, art, in a very holistic manner. And it is extremely appropriate festival happening in Shantaniketan, where the whole idea of Rabindranath's opening institution, Vishwabharati, and especially Kalabhavan, which is deeply involved in our heritage, roots, arts, at the same time, design and craft. So this is a very holistic approach. And I congratulate everyone, organizers, the government of West Bengal, and all the organization participating in it. And I wish this festival a success. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Panvar. And may I now request Mr. Gautam Dash of Kalabhavan to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here uh, for this special occasion. And it's a really unique occasion for the artisan art. They're promoting not only art, they're promoting uh, different uh, culture also. Many people coming for this fair. And this year, especially, they invited us. I'm part of the Kalavhavan, and I'm also part of the uh, one art institution here, Swad. Swad is a Santiniketan Institute of uh, Art and Design. The, who is the secretary is uh, Jagan Choudhury, is the secretary of the Swad. So this year, especially, uh, I'll giving thanks to Anjum. Anjum uh, is arranged one exhibition for our uh, participating artist in Swat. So hope you'll enjoy and then see this exhibition. Next time, hope we'll continue our relation with Nabanno. And this is the uh, first time we are organizing this art and craft together. And thank you, organizer. And hope we'll join again and again in this craft sphere and will uh, definitely encourage the artist and artisan for next, next and next. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Das. And at the end with, uh, of the inauguration, with great pleasure, I invite Ms. Anjum Katyal, the curator for New Earth Weekend. Really, she's the one who puts this together with a lot of passion and commitment. Anjum. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening and a very warm welcome. I know lots of kind words have been said um, about uh, putting this festival together, but I have to say that the extremely dedicated team who has worked with passion and commitment and fervor and dedication to make it all come together is no less 
um, you know, responsible for everything that you see here today. So here we are. This is the fourth edition of uh, the Nomano Earth Weekend, as you know. Today, this year, we're doing it in a very different and exciting mode because we've got a truly hybrid festival. We have a few sessions that are completely virtual. We have a few sessions where uh, one or two panelists will join in a, a virtual mode while the rest are present physically. And we have a few which are completely physical as well. So we're really running the gamut and looking forward to something which is uh, very different and certainly a first for us and a first for the team that's really worked hard in making it sure that all the technology of it works perfectly, which is not easy to do. As uh, has already been uh, shared by uh, uh, Mr. Oster, we are celebrating or marking, let me say, 75 years of independence as our overarching theme for the festival this year. We're looking at issues of democracy, ideas of community. We're looking at women, we're looking at children, and there are dedicated sessions to each of these, looking back over our country, looking forward to see where we're going and how far we've come. We also have in terms of literature and writing, we have sort of a discussion around how the pandemic has affected creative writers. We're also looking at very, very popular evergreen ideas of food and crime, which never seem to go away. So crime fiction and the session on food is also um, programmed into this. All things local, all things sustainable, which goes with the ethos of the Nobano Crafts Mela is also a major focus for us this year. I hope you'll go through the program and pick out all the sessions that interest you. Uh, we have a section called Notun Chinta Bhavna, which is our way of trying to connect with what is happening in the local area here, which is new, innovative, experimental. Youngsters, young people who are designers or artists or people working with local produce, with natural methods of farming, anti-chemical uh, agriculture. We've tried to showcase their work and give them, bring them forward and let them share what's happening because the sense is that there is a lot of new vibrancy developing in and around Shantini Ketan. And this needs to be seen and discussed and given its true uh, value. So in that spirit, we have a session on organic farming, where uh, people who are actually doing that right now on small plots or larger plots are going to be discussing their work and presenting their work. This session is being partnered with Sienna. Sienna, and we will briefly have a word from them a little later in the just after this, uh, to explain the connection between Sienna's own ethos and this particular natural farming idea. And we are also partnering, as Gautam Da explained, with Swad, where their studio artists are exhibiting and showing their work. Um, our program has been made layered and, and uh, interestingly complex because we have wonderful partners. I would like to thank Goethe Institute and the Max Miller Bhavan, who right from the initiation of this festival have come forward as partners and given us some wonderful discussions and wonderful panels. I'd like to also thank the Ginger and Spice Festival in the UK, who have also partnered and co-presented a session with us. That's one of the virtual sessions which you will see. A very interesting festival located in a small market, 500-year-old market town in the UK, Market Drayton, which is doing very similar things to what we are trying to do with Noban No Crafts Mela and with the no Man, no Earth Weekend. Birut Jatyo, one of the small presses that originated in Shantini Ketan, again have been a partner before and are partnering us again in one of the sessions and you will hear more from them later as well. And of course, SSVAD and Siena. So I'd like to thank our partners and uh, welcome all of you again. I would like to invite Oroni Mukherjee, chef who's in charge of all things food at the Siena shop and cafe. Uh, good evening. Um, it really is an honor and privilege uh, to be here on this platform. Um, we're the little babies of this little organization. We run a small cafe and design store uh, inspired by the artisans, inspired uh, by the produce, and inspired by uh, you know all things that are bountiful and lovely about our region and Bengal. 
uh, and we're really happy and honored to be here, you know, representing our region in a slightly, um, I don't know, call us a uh, hipster <laughs> or call us the, you know, the new generation, but it really is an honor and thank you so much. Thank you for being here and look forward to seeing you at the first session.